Hey, what's up expats and travelers alike? I'm Josh with Expats Everywhere. And I'm Kaylee. And today we're here to talk about how to get a U.S. passport for a baby while living in the U.S. So there are six steps that we have. We'll give those to you now and then we'll go into detail about those. Step number one is you have to obtain the birth certificate. Step number two is you fill out the application form. Step number three is you take a picture of your baby. Step number four is you schedule an appointment. Step number five, you get the paperwork together. And then step number six, you go to the actual appointment. All right, let's jump into step number one. Step number one is, well, actually, there's a pre-step. The pre-step is you need to have a baby. Um, this might sound funny, but you can't start this process without having the baby. So you have to have the baby first, and then you're going to prepare for the birth certificate. Now that's usually done at the hospital. The hospital is going to prepare most of that for you. They give you all the information that you'll need at the hospital and then you have to either go and get it or you can apply for it online. Now we would recommend that you get multiple copies of the birth certificate, pay for extras because, and we'll talk about this in a little bit when we get to the paperwork, but they actually take an original of the birth certificate. So you want to have extras for yourself. Apparently they do send it back, but you still want the original. Step number two is you're going to fill out the application. The application, it can be found online or you can pick one up at your facility center, your processing center. The application is a DS-11. If you go online and fill that out, it's like filling in any sort of PDF filler. You're going to type in your demographic information and then you're going to get to a point where you'll be able to submit it and you'll have a printable PDF essentially. Print that out and that's your hard copy to take to your facility. Now, if you don't do this, then you're going to be handwriting your application, which is fine too. And the application is pretty straightforward. It's just the demographics, the information about the baby, and then information about the mother and the father. That's it. Super simple and straightforward type of stuff they're looking for. And for the baby, for example, it would be like height, weight, eye color, that type of thing. Step number three is probably the hardest step, but also the funniest step is taking a picture of your newborn or your baby. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, good luck with this. I would love to see some of the photos that you guys were able to come up with your child. Um, we took anywhere between, I think it was like 1.1 and 1.2 million photos of our, of our baby. It was hard, guys. It was hard. If you know anything about passport photos, you know, the eyes have to be open, have to be looking at the camera, uh, there can't be anything else in the background. Well, they're a little lenient on baby passport photos, but still, there are some guidelines you have to follow. It's pretty funny. She hated it. We'll show you a couple of pictures to prove that. But the main things are nothing else can be in the picture, which is why you have to get a white sheet and lay your baby down on the white sheet. So you can't go to Walgreens or something and hold the baby because your hands can't be in it. So that's what makes it really hard. So you put the baby down on a white sheet. You have to get the baby looking forward. Now, thankfully, like you said, they're lenient in the sense that the eyes don't have to be all the way wide open. They can be kind of open as a baby, so that's Give good. them like a smoky look. <laughs> yeah, because you have to have the lights in there so you don't have a bunch of shadows or anything. So you put a bunch of lights on your baby and then you take a bunch of pictures and you try to get at least one that works. And we got one. <laughs> and we'll show you that one that we got. <laughs> Then what we did is we went to CVS and we printed it out instantly at CVS. So that was pretty easy. Yeah, I'm assuming that at a Walgreens, a CVS, or even at these facilities that do have photo centers, that they have a way to take photos of babies. I just don't know what that looks like and I'm not confident giving you guys any advice on that. Right, because the facility that we went to had the normal thing that you would see at a Walgreens where it's just a white screen and then a camera. So I'm not sure how they would do it because again, you can't hold the baby. So also, I don't think you wanna be laying your baby down on a floor in a public place because they're a newborn. So better to do it at home and just be safe have those pictures printed out. We did two, but you only needed one. Yeah, and we shot it with our iPhones, so you don't need any technical equipment to do that. No, and then when you go and print it out, 
it's pretty easy because they help you out with the dimensions but be very careful with that because they are kind of picky with the dimensions for the passport photo normally for people that are older than a baby they'll be much pickier but since they realize that babies just kind of all look like blobs and they rarely open their eyes that uh, you know they're, they're not going to be too strict on the dimensions or the baby looking at the camera or eyes open right Step four is to make the appointment. You have to do this online. You can't do this in person. So we went to usps.com forward slash scheduler, and it took us to the website that we needed to schedule the appointment. Now, the way this worked was we actually packed up the car. We, we got baby into the car. We were ready to go to get her passport, and we show up. We stand in line, and they tell us we need an appointment. I'm like, what? We didn't see that anywhere on the website that I was on to fill out the DS11 application. So they tell us the website that Kaylee just gave you, and we tried to make an appointment while in the post office, but the problem is it was Friday, all of the appointments were full, so we had to make it for Monday. Yeah, so Josh just got on his phone and did it because we couldn't make it in person. So he just jumped on his phone to try to schedule the appointment, but there weren't any available that Friday. Thankfully, it's not something that uh, the next appointment is in weeks. So just because ours hit over the weekend, we had to wait until Monday to do it, but we were able to get it done that Monday afterwards. And then with our appointment, when we actually went to the real appointment, we did notice that on a clipboard, they had the names of people that had made appointments. So probably you can't make an appointment same day because I assume that they, they print out who should be coming at what time. Right. Step five is to get all of your paperwork together. Now, the application is pretty straightforward in telling you what you need. And in my opinion, having more is better because you don't want to get there and realize, oh, I thought about bringing this, but then I didn't bring it. So I'm always over prepared. So I just got a folder together and you need your birth certificate. Like we said earlier, they take an original copy. They also make a copy of it. Now, apparently they send the original back, so that's good, but make sure you have extra copies of the original birth certificate. Well, you don't need your birth certificate, you need your baby's birth certificate. The baby's birth certificate, yeah. yes. Now, both parents need to be there. You also need identification, so this could be a passport or driver's license. We took both, and we made copies of both, but they only needed to look at the passports. So they looked at both of our passports, and they took the copies of those. So we didn't actually need the copies of the driver's license, but we had them just in case. On the government website for the application, it said that you needed to make copies of your identification and then also bring the hard copy of the identification with you. And when we got to the processing center, we found out that we didn't actually need to make copies beforehand. They had the facilities to do so. However, I would recommend that you go ahead and make those copies because maybe the center that you go to will either charge you for the printouts or they're going to not have the facilities to do that. Same goes with the photo. You're going to need to take your photos for the passport and some processing centers have the facilities for that, but like we said earlier, that could be a little tricky. A few things that we brought that we didn't actually need were her social security card. We brought it, but they didn't actually need it. And then paperwork from the hospital. They didn't look at any of that either. Step six is you go to the facility for your appointment. Now what's really important is mom, dad, and baby have to be there, all three. They make this very clear on the application. So make sure you don't show up and one of you is not there. So all three of you go and you bring all of your paperwork you have your appointment and it's pretty straightforward after that. It took maybe about 10 minutes and they go through and they have to fill out some information on the application. They take everything, they put it together and you're good to go. Yeah. If mom and dad can't both be there at the same time, there are some directions to follow that are on the website. So go ahead and check that out because there are some circumstances where mom and dad aren't available or maybe aren't alive, unfortunately. So check that out, see what those steps are. But for us, we showed up. It was a very straightforward process. I think from start to finish with the actual facility person, it took 10 minutes. This is also where they accept payment. So you're going to be paying $35 to the facility that you go to for processing. And then you're going to pay the fee for the actual passport itself to the state department. And that fee is going to depend on how quick you want it. The standard one, I believe, is $110. And then you can have it expedited, which we did. And the fees rise from there. 
You have two methods of payment that I know of. You have cash or you have debit card. They do not accept credit cards, so be mindful of that. Now, we chose to get ours expedited because we plan on applying for a global entry for her. We've applied for global entry, and we want her to get it as well because she has to get it. She can't just go on ours, and we want to do that quickly. So we are in the process of doing that. We have our interview scheduled. It's coming up in a couple weeks, and we're going to make a video about global entry and what that looks like as well. Yeah, this whole process kicked off because we wanted to do global entry, and we did some research and found out that our baby that we're gonna be like carrying also needs global entry, which is just mind blowing to me. Sorted out global entry. Um, so we're gonna be getting abroad again soon. Uh, we thank you guys so much for the support. We thank you so much for watching our stuff and just continuing to be supportive of what we do. And um, let us know in the comment section below if you guys have had to go through this process and if anything was different. So if you ran into any sort of different steps that you had to go through, let us know in the comment section below. That would be helpful to the community that we're creating here. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can stay updated with what's going on in the world of expats everywhere. Yep. And lastly, if you know somebody that needs this information, please share it with them. Just hit the share button, send it to them, and that way they get the information that they're looking for. Thank you guys so much. Catch you on the next video. Take care. Bye. Bye.